Hello folks, Matt Peterson here, Pragmatic Works. First time to the channel, make sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date on everything that we do. And in this video, gonna bring you episode three of Power Platform for Educators, where we're gonna show how you can use Power BI inside of your classroom to encourage classroom competition. Uh, and for those of you that have never used Power BI before, you're like I'm not an educator, this video is still for you. So stay tuned how we make this report. Before we begin, if you are interested in learning more about the Power Platform, please go to prag.work slash map40 where you will get 40% off our on-demand learning subscription, which has access to over 100 different courses. Let's get on to the video. All right, so the goal is I wanted to have a way to encourage my students when I was a former teacher to have classroom competition. So I came up with something called Peterson Pesos. Now that was my idea. No matter what your idea is, if you're trying to show data from a data source in a cool Power BI report visual, I want to show you how we can easily do that. And this is easy for educators to do. So all I have right here is an Excel file where I've put in uh, the name of the student and the name of the pesos, which is my competition. That's it. Once this is set up and I'm going to save this file, I'm just going to move on over here into Power BI. I'm going to have to close this file down in order to use it. And now we're in the Power BI desktop, which we need to pull data in. And we're going to go further into Power BI later in the series, but I want to get you excited here. So what I'm going to do is come on up here to the Get Data dropdown and say that I want to move into an Excel workbook. Or I could have clicked that link right there as well. So I'm going to choose Excel workbook, and then I'm going to go and find my file that I wanted to hook into, which I had called it Peterson Pesos. Now what's happening at this point is it is going to connect to that Excel workbook and then I decide, you know, which one of the sheets do I want from there? Or if I had formatted that Excel table as a table, I could choose the table. But I wanted to do it the really rough way to show you that even if you don't have it formatted as a table, we can still get this done very, very simply. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click over here on sheet one. Now when I click on it, it's going to give me a preview of my data to make sure that this is correct. And I could load right away, which would just load it to the report and I start building visuals. But just to let you know some other things that we're going to get into later in this series, I'm going to click on transform data down here. Now what this does is it opens up the Power Query Editor. And what the Power Query Editor does is it allows you to bring data in and you can transform it, get rid of columns, filter rows out, change data types, uh, and a whole lot more. So let's take a look at what Power BI just did natively for us here. So as I come in, I can see that over here in these applied steps, this is what Power BI did for the cleaning. So it pointed to my source, then I navigated to the sheet itself, and then it went to promoted headers. Because if you remember my Excel sheet, I didn't have it formatted as a table. So if I come up here to promoted headers, you can see if I even go back to navigation, you can notice that here is my first row, student pesos, and Power BI is smart enough to say, you know what, that doesn't look like the rest of your data. Because you're in an Excel sheet, or maybe it was a CSV file, we think that these are really your headers. So it then promoted the headers. Now if we take a look as well, it goes, well, the data type hasn't been formally defined, so it has this A, B, C, 1, 2, 3. Well, Power BI is going to attempt to figure out what that data type is. So if I come to change type, we can see now that it changed the student column to being text, picture perfect, and the pesos column to being numeric. And that's exactly what I want. But again, however, later in our course and series, we're gonna talk about, well, what if it's not what we want? What if we want extra transformations? Again, we're starting with an easy one here in episode three. So now that I like the way that the data looks, all I have to do to use this data in the report is I come up to the upper left-hand corner and I hit close and apply. So I hit close and apply here, and what's going to happen is the data is now going to be loaded into the Power BI report, which is going to allow me to make a visualization. Now what's awesome about Power BI, and also just note there's these other things over here, again we'll get into later in our uh, series, you have the table view, which is going to show you what your data actually is. All right, so we can get a preview of it. And then this is called your model view, which is where we start to bring in more than one table. We're gonna learn about data modeling as well. But this is a one table idea. So I'm gonna go back to the report view. And if I expand out the visualizations, these are all the visuals that come with Power BI. So for example, I can make a really easy visual here, simply clicking on uh, the stat column chart. I can click on it here. And then I just start to add in the data. 
So maybe I want my students to be on the x-axis. So I just drag and drop it in. And then I want the number of pesos that they've earned to be on the y-axis. And then as you can see, I've got a really nice, you know, column chart visualization here. However, for my students to make it more fun and interactive, uh, I'm gonna show you what I did uh, in the classroom. Well, not what I did, what I would have done. Uh, remember in this series here, quick little break, uh, I was a former educator for 16 years, came over into this sector, the power platform sector to become a trainer on it. But once I learned about all these things, I'm like, man, this is how I would have used as an educator to make my classroom hopefully all that much cooler. So here's what I would have done in my class. I would have used this really neat visual that doesn't come inherently with Power BI. So I'm going to just make a new page here. And if you don't like just these, you can always come down here and click on Get More Visuals. And if you click on Get More Visuals again, it takes you to kind of like to the visual marketplace. And there are tons of Power BI custom visuals. Uh, and the one that I'm going to use here is the Enlighten Aquarium. And if you see this blue check next to a custom visual, that means it's been Microsoft certified, so it is completely trusted. Uh, and that's the one that I'm gonna use here today. So I'm gonna click on Enlighten Aquarium. It's then going to bring that visual into this report. So this is the one I want, so yes, I'm gonna add it in. And then now, in just a few seconds, we'll see it in my custom visuals area here. So now I'm gonna click on my Enlighten Aquarium, just like so. And with here, we get fish, we get the fish size, fish speed, a whole bunch of things that you can do. But for this basic generic one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make each of our students one of our fish. So I'm gonna drag the student into the fish column. Then we got the nice little aquarium popping up, but nothing in there because in order for the fish to show up, they need to have some kind of metric assigned to them. Uh, and in this case, I'm using the pesos. So I'm gonna bring the pesos on down and bring this into the fish size. And now you can see that the fish, based on who the person is and how many pesos they have, so this is Priyanka, 220. However, the leader right now is Mary Kate with 275. And then from here, there's more, feel free, please explore more after this, but keeping it short for you. Uh, but if you go into the format section, this is where you can change the school if you don't want it to be around fish, but triangles, or you want them to be sharks, you know, that's really up to you. And then what I would do at this point, and if this was my visualization, because the, the fish are cool to see, but it's really hard to tell unless you hover what the actual count is. So in my classroom, I would have also added in a table visual. So if I click on a table visual here and then bring in the student, and then I bring in the pesos, now we can see that the pesos and the student, we can actually see them. Like if I click on Mary Kate here, you can see that it highlights just Mary Kate. If I pick on Rashid, then it's gonna highlight just Rashid. And then I would go in and I would format this up as well, start to make the values and the column headers, you know, larger with bigger pixel points and so on. So again, the goal of this video is to show you what Power BI can do for my educators who've never seen it. Uh, it's very easy. Uh, this is a free program to download on your uh, desktop or laptop. Uh, you just search for Microsoft Power BI Desktop Download takes you to the link. You can do it from your Microsoft store as well. Uh, again, this does not cost any money just to make reports on the desktop application. So hopefully this is something, you know, maybe you want to add into your classroom for some kind of metric or whatever. I love the fish tank aquarium. Uh, would I use it for a full business need? Probably not, but I think it's a lot of fun. So again, this was episode three. We have a lot more on deck for you this year. We did Power Automate in the second episode. Uh, so stay tuned to get these kind of quick little entries into these different parts of the Power Platform. And as I continue the series, we're gonna start to go more and more advanced with them. So hopefully you enjoyed And If that is the case, then I will be seeing you in the next one. And if you enjoyed this style of learning, take a look at the links below. We have a full platform of on-demand learning, uh, certification XP test prep help as well. We would love to be a partner with you. So again, with that being said, I will see you in the next one.